Guys, have a great day. If you don't already have a bulletin, you can open it up. There is an outline and a, some deeper life questions. And the reason why I'm telling you about this is because there's not going to be any projection today for this sermon. Yes, I am going to try, try and preach without uh, projections. That's, this is one of the things that I do at least once a year because I, I need to know how to do that just in case I'm, uh, the projection breaks down. So we're going to be preaching a sermon, and it's entitled Day Of and the Day After. And uh, you know what? It's kind of appropriate because today is the day after Christmas. And uh, if there's anybody here who's Canadian, happy Boxing Day. Uh, I am just learning about Boxing Day. I, when I was young, I, I thought, I heard about Boxing Day, the Canadians, and I, I thought that for the Canadians and the people who are from Great Britain, Australia, and New Zealand, I thought it was a day set aside for the kids to fight over the Christmas gifts. And I had this envision of two toddlers in the middle of the living room boxing it out while their parents sat on the, you know, ringside, you know, and who's going to get the gift this time? Then they throw a gift in, and that's what I thought of Boxing Day, right? Box, boxing? Matter of fact, I even put in Boxing Day, and I, there was a guy boxing Okay, and then I thought as I grew up that it meant uh, boxing up gifts to be taken back to the store because it was the wrong size or the wrong color or it wasn't what I want. People boxing up gifts and taking it back to the store, boxing. Um, I recently found out the history, though. Uh, my wife actually told me <laughs> on the drive-in um, that Boxing Day was a, 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 a custom of hundreds of years ago that people uh, would think about the poor and they would literally uh, box up uh, either leftovers, food, or, or they box up, uh, box up gifts and take it to the poor. Or they would take it to their poor servants or even tradesmen who, who really didn't make a lot of money then. And that was a day to give away some of the blessings that you had to others so that they would have a box of goodies even during uh, the time. But now uh, what I hear a Canadian, when you ask a Canadian, what's Boxing Day all about? It's about another day of buying gifts and watching ice hockey. So those are the two things Boxing Day is really important about. Now they forgot all about giving gifts to the poor. That being said, happy Boxing Day. Right? Okay. Well, listen, we're, um, we're in Luke chapter 2. If you can turn to Luke chapter 2, I'd like to read verses 15 to 20. Luke chapter 2. Uh, obviously, this is a part of the Christmas story. And it's a very familiar one. But I'm going to focus in on uh, verses 15 to 20. This is uh, suddenly a great host, verse 13, of heavenly uh, hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to men whom his favor rests. And then it says in verse 15, When the angels had left the shepherds and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary, and Joseph, and the baby who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen Jesus, the baby, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. In verse 19, but Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Would you pray with me as we begin? Father God, thank you so much for this story of the shepherds, how they were so excited to hear from the angels, to see the Christ child, and to share the revelation that they received directly from you to the people in that little village. And I wonder, Father God, and as I wonder today, what happened the next day, and the day after that, and the day after that? Oftentimes we are here to worship you, and we are filled with your Holy Spirit. We are energized for the new week, and then Monday happens, then Tuesday happens, and Wednesday, and there's the day after that, and the day after that. So, Father God, I pray that we would be uh, men and women who would take this excitement with us, and refresh our hearts and minds each day 
with the glory that the angels had shared with the shepherds that day when Jesus was born, and we might carry it every day of our lives. We pray this in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus, and all God's people said, amen. So I got to ask a question. So, and this is, a, this is actually an audience participation, okay? All right? I know that this is something new. But what is it that you do on the day after Christmas? What is it that you usually do after the day after Christmas? Anybody? Raise your hand. Anybody? Yeah. Sleep. Sleep. Leftover. Eat the leftovers. Turkey. I love turkey sandwiches. Yes. What do you do? Play with the toys, right? Play with the toys. What do your parents usually do? New games, that's good. Oh, in the, in the house with a bow and arrow. Okay, that's it. Oh, that, that'd be good. That'd be good. You know, uh, parents, we, we usually have to clean up, right? I mean, it's like a ton of paper and everything. And, and what do you usually throw out? One of the receipts, right? Do you have the receipt for that? Oh, my goodness, I threw it out. It's in the trash, and that's one of my jobs is to go through the trash to find the receipt on the day after Christmas. Uh, that being said, you know, there's a lot of things that we do. Um, as we said, you know, um, one of the uh, things I hate doing is to go to the mall after Christmas to exchange gifts. I think it's, you know, one of the depressing things. You see everybody bring it, and, and the line, right, the line to exchange gifts is so long, and you stand there and wait, and I'd rather just buy new gifts and just throw the old ones away and take them back, right? That's how, by the way, uh, that's how cheap my gifts are. Anyway, that's the point is, what happened to the shepherds the day after their encounter with the angels and the Christ child? What happened? That night, they were so excited, they went through the town and they spread the word. That's what it says in Scripture. They, they walked up, knocked on, you can imagine this is uh, probably nighttime because the angels came to them at night, probably midnight, one o'clock in the morning, and they're knocking on doors and waking people up and telling them about the Christ child. And I'm thinking, everybody's thinking these shepherds are crazy. And, and they're going, what are you doing out? You know, they're looking out their window at the street and, and they're yelling and, and running through the village. They were so excited because they had been told by an, a host of angels. Now, some would say it was a couple hundred angels. A host could have been a thousand, uh, an army of angels. And they had this incredible encounter with the Christ child. The Messiah was born. Unto you is born this day. Christ is the title Messiah in Greek, they knew that the Messiah had come. But I'm sure there was one of them that said, you know what, we, we just left a bunch of sheep out in the fields and we were supposed to be watching them. Shouldn't we get back to our job? And they all went, oh yeah, we better get back there. And they went back to work. So two days from there, and five days from there, and ten days from there, were the shepherds just as excited as they were that night? Or did it wear off? You know, I, I find uh, that I get excited about certain things, and man, it's fun. For example, I don't know about you guys, but the first snowfall. Does anybody excited by the first snowfall? Is everybody, the snow's coming down. I know some of you hate snow, but I think I love snow. And what do, what do the kids wish for, especially when it's snowing out and the next day is school? You wish for what? Snow day. It's the ice. Yeah, I don't know. Ice is, ice is bad, but you know, ice. How many of you skated into church today? That's good. Skated in. We were backing out of the driveway and we, I, I hit the brakes, and I, you know, if Janet wasn't in the car, I would have loved to drove down my driveway, hit the brakes, and see how far I would slide. But with ABS brakes, it really is, it's hard to do it with ABS brakes. You know, it's like, I know, it's terrible. 
What were we talking about? Snow day, right? Don't we love a snow day? Kids, don't we love a snow day? And, right? And what do you guys do when there's 10 inches of snow? I'm talking to the North Country people, not the ones that come up here from Hawaii and stay in their houses. What do you do with snow when there's 10 inches of snow? What do you usually make? Snowmen or uh, igloos, igloos, a, a, a snow fort. And, you know, you make something out of snow. Snowman, but look, we got to use the correct snow person. Snow person. Yeah, be careful about that. Snow person. Snowball fights. Yeah, and that's, uh, that goes along with Boxing Day, you know. Um, <laughs> Ron Hutchcraft, a friend of mine, uh, and actually Janet and I knew he and Karen. Karen, uh, uh, his wife passed away of cancer a couple of years ago. He has a radio show, and uh, he recently said on A Word With You, he said this, my theory is that inside every person, there is a little person who, who loves snow. <laughs> and he went on and said, and it's sad, but there is this little boy in each man, and when the little boy dies, the man loses his vision for life. I think the kid does come out of all of us at Christmas time. The kid in us really gets excited about Christmas. And I think we need to keep that excitement going. You know, a kid comes out of me at certain amusement parks, especially, you know, one of those thrill rides, you know, at Great Adventure or, or Six Flags, and man, I, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. Uh, and, and again, when you start saying, nah, I, I don't want to do the rides anymore, you're starting to lose something. You're, you're losing that child inside. Inside most of us is this kid who wants to do crazy things, especially on a snow day. Sliding on a piece of cardboard, by the way, in Hawaii, down a hill of grass was the way they sled in Hawaii during Christmas. Anybody in Hawaii uh, during Christmas time? They, they hand out these cardboard sleds and you slide on the grass. I never went sliding on the grass, but that was a thrill that I had to have when I was in Hawaii. Uh, I used to take the boys out sledding. We'd look at the most treacherous hill with the most trees in it so that we could barely crash into them, see who could weave their way through the trees. Now my sons do it with skis in Colorado, and they'll go off trail, and there's these big signs that says, do not go off trail. Your ticket will be torn if you go off trail. And they go right by that side, sign into the trees, and they want me to follow them. They, well, anyway, thrill seekers. They have a young heart. They haven't been hurt by life, or they haven't been hurt by trees, and so they continue to do it. And then all of a sudden, as you get older, you start to reserve that excitement because you know that there can be consequences to your actions, and you start to think, you know, I, I don't want to be that little kid anymore. I'm going to be more serious about life. And life becomes a routine, and all of a sudden, we just are existing and trying to keep... Keep our, then we are existing and we're not doing the very things that we, that ex excited us when we were young. Again, I, I think uh, building snowmen, and, and uh, we had a, uh, two kids next door, they built a snowman, and they, they, they rolled these big, huge balls, and one of them is uh, seven years old and the other one's five. And the snowman's got to be seven feet high. So I had to ask their parents, I was delivering some cookies to them from Janet. I said, how did they get that? Oh, they, get, they rolled the snowball. We had to put it on top of each other. They, they just couldn't do it. And they were so excited about that snow person. And, and I, we just, they wanted to tell me about it and how they got the face on it and everything else. You know, the snow, what, you know, snow person that you put on uh, two eyes made out of coal. I don't even know where you get coal anymore. I never understood the carrot nose. Never understood that. But they had a hat and a scarf that was, it was almost as if they were making Frosty the Snowman. Yeah, I know. The problem is that when you form this snowman and it's so excited to do it, then the temperature changes. And within a couple of weeks, the snowman does what? He starts to melt away. 
and the snow person loses their shape, loses their identity as a snow person, and they become mush guy or mush girl, you know, and they just become a big pile of mush. I wonder if as we become snow persons for God on Christmas Day, we are tall and we're smiling because the coals are in a, in a smiley face, and, and yet by the end of the week, we've melted into mush persons, spiritually melting snow persons. What happens to the snowman sometimes happens to us as God's people. We just fade away. We slowly go soft. We we melt by the heat of our culture that applies heavy pressure to compromise both our Christian convictions and our Christian lifestyles. And we kind of melt into the culture around us instead of standing tall and standing solid. We watch ourselves and we watch others and, and we try to emulate the people around us as opposed to emulating our Father who is in heaven, who wants us to be his children in this planet where a lot of people don't care about the Father in heaven. See, we're supposed to make a moral difference. We're supposed to be the salt and the light to this dark world. And what is happening is that we become more conforming to the world than the world conforming to our Savior and Lord. I think increasingly we seem to practice our culture rather than practice our faith when we're out. We reflect what the culture casually accepts instead of standing for what we are told from the scriptures to, to believe. We watch and listen to the cultural music and we watch and listen to the cultural TV entertainment as opposed to maybe making changes in our own choices so that we might stand tall for Christ and his life. You know, sometimes I think about my life. I've lived long enough to look at my life and think that there are some things I would have never considered allowing in my home and all of a sudden there it is. We've gotten soft. You know, one of the things that uh, I recently heard uh, was that Malachi chapter 2, verse 10 says that God hates divorce. And I know that uh, divorce is all around us. Um, some uh, families in, in Parkside over the years, I've counseled with them, have gotten divorced. As a matter of fact, I was just talking to my wife. Uh, there are couples that I counseled just this year that are now separated at Christmas time right now. And how horrible that is to be alone at Christmas. God says that he hates divorce. Do you know one thing that God says that he doesn't say there? He doesn't say, I hate divorced people. You know, our love for others should always be there no matter what the person is or what the person did. Our love should extend like Christ's love extended to us. God does hate divorce, but he does not hate divorced people. The heat has made us more and more soft on issues like the sanctity of life, whether it's standing without compromise for the life of an unborn child or the life of a born child who's living with an awful need or the life of elders who gave us life at the end of their life. We need to begin to understand that God, God made life and he wants us to see that life is precious no matter where or what timeline. And I think maybe some Christians have gotten soft on those issues. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13 says, we're to put the full armor of God on so that when the day of evil comes that we might be able to stand our ground and after you have done everything, to stand and stand firm and not melt away. 
I, I added that part, by the way, not melt away, okay? We, we, need to, we need to stand firm. And in 2022, I want to be courageous again. I want to be excited about Jesus again. I, I want to be like the shepherds, telling everyone, knocking on doors, reaching out to people, loving others again. Um, I hope that you will join me in that. Because... We can't let an out-of-control, spiritually devoid world keep melting us down, making us soft, so there's nothing left to our spiritual truth, and we just go and exist in a planet and wait till heaven comes. If you belong to Jesus, your life is supposed to be a loving choice. We must stand on our ground and be... The shepherds, not only the day of, but the day after, and the day after that, and the day after that, and the day after that. You see, we are living now in the day after. Let's live for him all the days of our lives. And I believe we can be firm and be a great snow person for the Lord, even in the summer, if we try hard, all right? Would you stand with me as we uh, close in a, a rare word of prayer? Father, I believe, Father, I believe the shepherds were influencers of their culture. And I believe they were an influence the day after they encountered the Christ child, and the day after that, and the day after that. I don't have any record in the biblical account. But I believe they were so excited they would have never forgotten that night. And they would have told their children, their grandchildren, they would have told their neighbors every chance they, they did have. I pray that we would have that same excitement. The excitement of telling others about what you have done for us. I thank you for each person here, Lord. And each person here has a story of how they were Lost, and then they were found by you, and they trusted Jesus as their Savior, and their life had been changed. And I pray, Father God, that they would look back on that, and they'll, they'll, they'll look at their life now, and, and they, might, they might even say, you know, what happened? That they would go back to that moment when you changed them, and they would say, I need to share, I need to share this with someone Today. And share this with someone tomorrow. And share this with someone the next day. And I pray, Father God, that we would all be rock solid in our faith. That we'd stand firm against the pressures of the world. And I pray this for each one of us as we pray this in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Let's sing this last chorus. Let's uh, sing this song one more time before, again, we put it away for a year. But remembering, as Pastor Mike's preaching about the, the shepherds, the first Noel was sung to them. The first Noel, the angel did say, was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay in fields where they lay keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so deep noel 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 born is the king of israel they looked up and saw a 
star shining in the east beyond them far and to the earth it gave great light and so it continued both day and night no all with one accord sing praises to our heavenly Lord that hath made heaven and earth of naught and with his blood mankind Praise God. Thank you so much for being here. And on your way out, we have some post-Christian gifts for you. Post-Christian gifts. Alliance Magazine's out there. Two copies you can get uh, November's and January's. And this is our 40-day prayer package. We're going to start this in the new year, the first uh, Wednesday of January. Pick this up and get prepared and come out and pray with us on Wednesday nights in January. God bless you and have a happy and blessed new year.